Hey there, viewers, voyeurs. Welcome. You're with Got That Funk. I am sorry I haven't posted on this channel for such a long time. I can offer you no plausible, rational excuse for that, especially in light of the fact that I post videos once a week on the Breakfast Club channel. If you're, if, if you're subscribed to me here, but you're not subscribed over on the Breakfast Club, I can't imagine why not. Uh, that's my baby. We have different hosts every day of the week. My day of the week is Mondays, and I post there every week on Monday. So if you aren't subscribed over there for some reason, please go and subscribe and watch all the other hosts as well. It's not all about me. We have some pretty good conversations going on and some very interesting contributors at the moment. On, uh, on Tuesdays, we've got Sister Danger. On Wednesdays, we've got Nathan Brendan Masters, who's fantastic. On Thursdays, we've got Bionic Dance, who I love. And uh, on Fridays, we've got Kazoom Fowler, who's a good mate of mine on YouTube nowadays, and Josh ZZZ, Giant Awake on Saturdays, and at the moment, Serious Mind is hosting Monday, uh, sorry Sundays until such time as Peach comes back with a uh, brand new computer. But we will get Peach back eventually on The Breakfast Club. I'm pretty confident of that. Um, so yeah, uh, in the meantime, those are the hosts. And the conversations are sometimes all about a certain topic, and sometimes we sort of bounce different topics off of one another and talk about a variety of things. So if you're not subscribed on The Breakfast Club, please do so, link below. All right, that's out of the way. For this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Electoral College and why I think it should be abolished. Now, some people will see the title of the video and assume without watching the content that I've just got sour grapes about the fact that Trump won the election with the Electoral College and Hillary won the popular vote but didn't win the presidency. Nothing could be further from the truth. That's not why I'm making this video. I have had problems with the Electoral College ever since I was 11 years old in sixth grade and learned what it was and how it worked and why it uh, was put into place. I've never been a fan of the Electoral College and the only reason I'm bringing it up now and haven't brought it up in previous election years is simply because now we have one of those anomalies. I mean, normally uh, the same person who wins the popular vote wins the Electoral College. And so normally it's not really much of a bone of contention for most people. But the fact that it's thrown up these two separate results uh, has uh, given people an excuse to talk about it more openly and uh, be more scrutinous of it. And I'm glad about that because I've, I've never been a fan of the Electoral College. I understand when the founders made the Constitution some 229 years ago, give or take, that um, you know they wanted to give smaller, more rural states the ability to sort of punch above their weight, as it were, and not be dominated by issues which were more affecting um, states with larger urban populations. I get it. And, you know, they toyed around with different ideas about how best to elect a president. And my, my recollection from what I learned in school, and mind you, this is going back 40 plus years, so my recollection is probably a bit rusty. But there were two main reasons, as far as I can recall, that the founders decided to go with the Electoral College. Number one was they wanted states to be able to punch above their weight so that less populated states wouldn't be dominated by more populated states. And they also wanted to uh, have a sort of... Um, safety measure in place. Rather than having a one man, one vote, they wanted to give the official election process to an electoral college whose members were chosen by the various political parties so that the establishment would still have some control over who became president. Because at the time the Constitution was framed, large swathes of the population were either semi-literate or illiterate, and they didn't really feel that uh, uneducated people could necessarily be trusted to uh, know what the best interests of the future and of the country were, um, so they wanted to have the Electoral College as a sort of safety measure. Those are the two main things that stick in my memory. Feel free to elaborate or correct me uh, if your understanding is different. Um, in the comment section below, I encourage as many comments uh, as detailed as possible with your opinions. And yeah, if you think I'm wrong, please tell me why. Now here's my main issue with the Electoral College. My, my, I, it, it comes under two sort of similar but strikingly different uh, points of view. Number one, I, I say similar because you make the same argument from two different directions and you get two different results. Number one, first of all, I'm going to use one of the most populous states and one of the most, well, the most populous state, my hometown, my home state of California, and uh, one of the least populous states, which is Wyoming. Wyoming may be the least populous state. It's either that or Alaska, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, Wyoming has three electoral votes and a population of round about half a million people. 
California has 55 electoral votes and a population of round about 40 million people, okay? So in a given presidential election year, about 14 million people in California are likely to cast a vote. So a majority of 14 million is 7 million and one. Okay, 7 million and one votes for a particular candidate in California will carry all 55 of California's electors. Because 48 out of the 50 states, California and Wyoming included, have a winner takes all system which whoever wins the majority of votes wins all of the state's electors, not a proportion of it, but all of it. In Wyoming, you've got just over uh, half a million people as residents, and of those, about 250,000 are likely to vote in a presidential election year. Of that 250,000, cut that in half plus one, that's 125,000 and one person can get all three electoral votes. So if you divide 125,000 and one by three, you get, I believe, was it um, 41,667 votes per elector. So 41,667 votes per elector, 125,001 votes gets you all three of the state's electors. In California, with its population being so much higher, um, and the elector is obviously being greater because of that, you get 55 electors for 7 million and one votes. If you divide 7 million and one by 55, and I'm going off memory here, you get something like 127,272 um, votes per elector. So that's more than the 125,001 that it takes to get three electors in Wyoming. So a person in Wyoming voting in the presidential election, their vote is more than three times powerful than a voter's is in California. I think that's a problem. And I don't understand why people think it's not a problem. Why should someone's vote in one part of the country be worth, literally worth more than someone else's vote in another part of the country? Um, so there's that. Now, when I say similar but different, here's what I mean. Uh, the, the disadvantage, that, so that's how, it, how, that's how the Electoral College advantages smaller states, okay? The disadvantage of the Electoral College to the smaller states plays out like this. There's 50 states in the USA, and um, out of those 50 states, if you add up all of the electors from the 11 most populous states in the country, that adds up to exactly 270 electoral votes which means that all you have to do is win a majority of uh, the vote in the top 11 states and you would not need a single vote in the other 39 states. Not one vote. They could vote completely the other way and it wouldn't make a fuck all bit of difference. You'd still win the election because you won the top 11 states. So California, Florida, Texas, Illinois, uh, Ohio, uh, Michigan, um, I know I'm forgetting a few, obviously, but yeah, the top 11 states win those and you've got the presidency. Um, now, I have had a conversation in a video uh, comment section by Mr. Repsion. Uh, he, he deleted the comment that the thread was on, so sadly these comments don't exist anymore. But uh, some jackass called Hurricane Caddy was saying to me that you couldn't win the presidency unless you won the popular vote in a majority of states. And that's blatantly not true. As I just elaborated, if you win a majority in the top 11 most populated states, the other 39 states don't have to cast a single vote for you. It won't matter. The same person also seemed to think that the Electoral College was fair um, just because just because, like, uh, you know, the, they, the, they don't seem to understand population distribution. I, I'm just going to leave it at that. They don't seem to understand population distribution. So when you see a map of the 48 uh, states of the continental U.S., and so much of it is covered in one color, um, it gives the impression that so many people support candidate whatever color that uh, is ascribed to. And that's really not the case. Um, population concentration in most countries, and America is no different, is along the coastlines. That's normal. That's just the way it works in humanity. Um, 
the greatest population centers are usually around the coastlines. And that being so, um, it's not surprising that uh, you do get um, different colorations in those areas to a pretty large degree. Now, how do we fix it? If you say, okay, Paul, so what if we get rid of the Electoral College? You know, we, we, first of all, in order to get rid of the Electoral College, you would need a constitutional amendment. No amount of legislation will be able to reform or abolish the Electoral College. It would take a constitutional amendment. And that being so, advocates like me of abolishing the Electoral College really ought to get busy with our letter writing and advocacy of this issue if we're going to have any chance of changing the name of the game uh, probably before 2024 but uh, 2020 would be a nice goal to set but 2024 is probably more realistic because necessarily amending the Constitution is a difficult cumbersome process it should be a difficult cumbersome process to amend the Constitution um, and I'm not going to go into why I think that but basically um, I think in the Declaration of Independence it says something like, you know, you don't want to abolish uh, well-established forms of government for light and transient reasons, and I think that's applicable here. Having said that, you know, um, a constitutional amendment to abolish the Electoral College I think is in everybody's interest, but what would we replace it with? Would we simply replace it with a one-man or one-person, one-vote system where whoever wins the majority of votes in the country wins the presidency? I'm not so sure that I think that's the fairest way of going about it. I understand why some people, like the Amazing Atheist, think it's fair. And it's certainly fairer than the system we've got now, which is the Electoral College. Um, but I personally am a, sort of a, a preferential vote supporter, uh, where you can rank candidates according to your preference. I'm also a supporter of mandatory voting, with the proviso that... Uh, if you're going to institute mandatory voting, you should have the proviso that none of the above should be on the ballot, especially when it comes to electing a governor or a president or, you know, when you're electing a person to a position of authority, if you don't like any of the people on the ballot, you should be able to express that and still vote. And I think if we're going to have mandatory voting, you would have to be able to express that you are dissatisfied with the choices. You shouldn't just have to spoil your ballot or register abstention or whatever. You should be able to vote none of the above. And if none of the above got more votes than any of the candidates got, you'd have to have a renewed election with new candidates running. You couldn't just rerun the same candidates again. That would be redundant. Uh, the candidates that were running had been rejected, and therefore you should run new candidates. I was pleased to note, I saw um, that Alan Grayson, who was a member of Congress for Florida, uh, make this suggestion on the House of Representatives uh, recently, or maybe it was Senate, I can't remember. Anyway, um, but Alan Grayson is a, a, a pretty well-known and semi-respected lefty in Congress, and I was very pleased to see that he was making noises about none of the above. Now, he was, he was uh, advocating that without necessarily talking about mandatory voting, and I don't think you need to have mandatory voting for the none of the above option to still make sense. But I think you could not have mandatory voting unless none of the above was part of that package. I think the United States would benefit from mandatory voting um, with none of the above as an element of that. My second choice would be some sort of preferential voting system where you can vote for you know, candidate A as your first preference, but if they don't get the most votes, then candidate B would be the person that you wanted to vote for. Um, I think Therefore, you know, you could ascribe a, a points value for A votes and a points value of B votes, and whoever gets the most points wins the election. Something like that. What I don't think you could do is institute a system where whoever wins the majority of the, uh, uh, the vote in the majority of states wins the election. No. Uh, in America, where there's 50 states, the majority of states will be 26 states, and there are at least 26 states in the country that have relatively low populations and you would end up with a situation where you could win the presidency uh, without having anywhere near the popular vote. So uh, that's just to me a, a non-starter from the beginning. Um, so what do you guys think uh, about my thoughts on the Electoral College, my objections to it, my suggestions for how to replace it? Um, 
what I don't want to hear is, oh, amending the Constitution is unrealistic because it's so difficult. I mean, let's just not be defeatist about this shit, all right? At the end of the day, yeah, it's supposed to be difficult. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try. I get really frustrated when people say, oh, it's too hard to do this, so we shouldn't bother. We should try to find an easier way. No, we should try to find the best way, and if that way is difficult, so be it. Let's get to work. Thank you for watching this video. I look forward to what we have to talk about in the comments section, and I'll see you again next time. Back again on Monday on The Breakfast Club talking about something completely different, I'm sure. In the meantime, may all your ups and downs be ups.